Hey everyone, Nick Shaheen here looking at Microsoft. Dennis, thanks for pointing that out. Okay, so I don't have a trade in it, so this is an unbiased opinion. I like the company, I use their products, I'm not an Apple guy, so all these are disclosures. Also, nothing here is a recommendation to do a trade. This is just me sharing my opinion, uh, fundamentally kind of, and on the chart, and uh, what levels that stick out. This is a five minute chart. Looks like a disaster waiting to happen. Big gap here. It recently reported earnings. Sorry, the market is open. So is the chat room. Um, speaking of, down below there should be a link to in the description to the chat room. Give it a shot. It's free uh, to try it out. Um, so, big open space. Bad day in the market. Overnight jubilation is gone. Amazon spike was a who everybody's uh, celebrating. So it looks like um, a disaster waiting to happen. So it's not crazy to see it close this gap to 168 and change 0.3 and it wouldn't be a disaster would it be a time to quote buy the dip not to me but this is where before I answer anything I ask what's your time frame for me the time frame is very important because how can I make a decision as to whether it's a buy the dip moment or not if I'm trading for the next 15 20 minutes it's a different answer than if I'm trading for the next 20 years it's a different answer if I'm trading for the next swing uh, move like for months so or weeks or days sometimes so it all depends on the time frame so I'm gonna look at it from from different time frames literally so this is a five minute chart it shows weakness it shows a potential buy to dip moment which would be anywhere around one hundred and sixty eight dollars uh, why do I choose this number because of a lot of reasons mainly a small consolidation period here again these are five minutes so it's not like days and then this one right here. So on earnings, it spiked to a level, faded from it, came back to it, then spiked again. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe it's the timing of the earnings or whatever. Regardless of what happened, ignore the news. So this is what I'm seeing on the chart. So in order for me to, so, so that would be a good point of rest on the fall. So if I was short here, I'd probably book here. And then if I wanted to continue to be short, I'd reshort it on the breach of that so-called support so then I zoom out so now I can see it better and those same points with relation to prior and that uh, to prior action so again it's been a turning point at several times so 167 let's call it 168 and look at that so fail fail took their time came back and spiked through it and, and are use they are using it as footing so if they fall to it and they use it as footing this dip is fine as part of normal um, price action higher lows they reestablish the fact the neckline that they just broke out of prior uh, resistance becomes forward support this is speculation we don't know if it's going to hold or not just looking at this period of time which is from the 17th on uh, the point of control is about 166 which is literally the place where they bought it and sold it the most. So if they fall back to it, they're going to buy it and sell it again the most. So this is 15 minute increments. So every candle is 15 minutes. So let's go to 30, see if the story changes. Again, this is the point we're watching. This is the point, this is the point, this is the point. So whatever I just said, this confirms it. The 167 area, 166 is pivotal. So in fact, I don't know, I, that tells you I don't trade it often. If I wanted to, uh, do something I'll probably draw a box around here so this is a an important zone to look at uh, again this is a 30 minute chart I'll double that 60 minute chart not much new information except that we do have a nice higher low trend so technically if it could fall to 165 I'd still be okay with what's going on Okay, so 120 now is starting to look like a rising wedge that's, um, you know, by the dip is like a almost a laughable matter. What dip? Basically, now the question is. So, so let me jump to a daily. So you can see what just a, you know, not, not too long ago, it was a heck of a lot lower than where it is right now. So yeah, I could buy the dip. But again, it depends on the time frame. And now you can see where that box is. So in this case, I'm okay with it falling to 160 and not change much. And I wouldn't consider it a dip. I would just consider them retesting footing, shaking weak hands out um, in order to establish a better base. So what if we go to a weekly? So now you can see that, boy, that's an extended run and then some. Um, if you're if you're ABC guy person, that's a one push 
some consolidation and then a second push eyeball that's about where it should be so a dip back to 145 142 that is a stick out moment 146 so if i were to pick a line in fact i'm going to do it right here i'm going to put an alert here not that i'm going to do anything i just want to look at the chart just from that one candle right there whatever happened that week we're on a weekly candles now december 2nd and then uh, another one here that's a consolidation so I would expect consolidation at every uh, pivot point. So this would be another one. Um, so this would be another major area. I'm not calling it down there. I'm just telling you what I see. Uh, the RSI is still strong relative to itself. So you can't short it with conviction. But if somebody wants to take a stab at it, it would be shorting the whole market. Um, next week, iffy. Um, today's close... Maybe people want to go flat into Virus Weekend headline potential. And Monday, if nothing happens, we'll pop a little bit. And then Tuesday, everybody remember, oh, my gosh, we're still in virus mode. Then they'll sell off. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But back to Microsoft. So we just addressed it from um, the five-minute candles as to where is a dip and where is a buy to dip. Established the zone, zoomed out, and answered the same question over a whole bunch of periods of time. That's the only way to look at it. Now, you can play uh, fundamentals. So it's like 29, 30 PE. This is trailing 12 months, so it's actual PE. And almost 10 times sales. So it's more expensive than Facebook. And they, bo they are both growth companies. I like the prospects of Facebook better just because they literally... Whoa. Okay. We got an alert on gold. They literally have 2.5 billion active users that they have their attention and uh, they're monetizing like eight bucks each so this is gold live whoa okay so if this is a cup and handle ish type of pattern gold is going much higher so tlt is probably moving up and so is the yen uh, tlt has a prior fail yesterday so that is going to happen here some somewhere i bet you i have a trigger here that i can restart oh no that not that one Anyway, so the video was about Microsoft. I answered that question down below in the description. There's a link that gets you into the chat room. Do it. Thanks, Dennis.